Okay. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming to the subteam carnival. Uh, I'm Maria, the robot captain, and there are a couple things I wanted to talk about before we get started. Uh, to begin, I wanted to talk a little bit about what we do as a team. If you didn't at attend our event last month, essentially we're a robotics team that takes place in FRC competitions. These competitions are run by a larger art organization called FIRST, which organizes robotics related competitions for elementary and middle school students as well. So on our FRC team, every year we build robots from scratch designed for the annual competition uh, and our build season is from January to March. Competition season lasts from around March to May, depending on how many events you attend. And then there are three main branches of our team, strategy, robot, and business. Strategy focuses on figuring out how to maximize our chances of winning the competition and the robot sub team obviously builds the robot. Uh, we also like to think of our team as a small company, so we have a business team that's responsible for developing relationships with sponsors, planning STEM outreach events in the community, and our social media, among other things. The focus of today's call is to go a little more into depth about each of the sub teams that are within each branch of our team. Our leads have created some presentations on each sub team and about what they do. Hopefully, about hearing, hopefully after hearing them speak, you'll have a better understanding of what you're interested in learning more about on our robotics team. At the end of all the presentations, there will be a Q&A session so that you can ask leads specific questions that you may have pertaining to certain sub teams. Um, we're gonna post a Google document with links to every Zoom call so that you guys can switch between Zooms at the end. Um, thanks for coming and we hope you enjoy it. All right. Um, I'm Sean. I'm the strategic management lead and strategic management is the first sub team we're going to talk about today. So strategic management is a part of the strategy branch of Husky Robotics, along with strategic software and then drive team. Um, the main purpose of strategic management is to craft the optimal strategy for our team. So essentially, we figure out what the robot does and then the robot branch figures out how to do it. So the process for developing our strategy begins at kickoff at the beginning of every season and continues as we get a sense of our capabilities and it goes all the way through competition. So um, strategic management has many small responsibilities, but we can kind of break them down into three categories. So our first is analyzing and breaking down the game. So we analyze the objectives and like which ones are easiest and which ones are most difficult uh, starting a kickoff. And then we also try and figure out what the most convenient objectives are in terms of what gives us the most points and what's the easiest like in terms of points. So we also try to predict what other teams will do so that maybe we could play defense against them or see which teams are most valuable to our alliance. And then another thing we do in terms of breaking down the game is analyzing the field layout. So seeing like what's where, fastest way to get there, which sometimes you'll have obstacles, choke points, lots of stuff that gets in the way. And then we also just work with strategic software to decide what scouting data needs to be collected by the scouting app they develop each year. And then um, Another main objective we have is guiding robot design. Um, so we create design requirements and we see like what mechanical needs to make the robot be able to do. So we essentially guide what it needs to be able to do. And then um, we also monitor robot construction with the leads and project managers to figure out what design requirements need to be met first and how to meet them fastest and most efficiently. And then at competition, we have a big responsibility of coordinating scouting and working with strategic software to scout matches and pit scout. Um, pit scouting is essentially going around and seeing what other teams' robots, what strengths they have. And then sc match scouting involves looking at matches and analyzing like how we do, how other teams do, collecting data on all that. And then we also work with drive team to figure out what needs to be done to make the robot be most efficient at competition and what strategies to employ. And our final competition responsibility is compiling a pick list. So at the end of every competition, there's essentially like you, the top eight teams pick their alliances for eliminations. So we compile the list of what teams we want on our alliance 
to help us win the competition. Um, during a typical year, the season begins with st strategic management leading the strategy discussion at kickoff. Um, we essentially analyze like what the game, every year at kickoff, we get the game, we analyze it, figure out what we need to do to be most effective. And then during build season, we spend most of our time creating and analyzing strategies, helping strategic software with the scouting app and moving room to room to coordinate with the robot branch and figure out what how the design process is going and how design requirements are being met. Um, this year, uh, it's a little different, obviously, because of COVID, we have different circumstances. We have similar responsibilities, obviously, but instead of going room to room, we'll need to adapt to do that over electronic methods, such as Google Chat and Zoom. And then something first announced for this year that I'm very excited about and I think strategic management will have a big role in is the game design challenge. So first, essentially we get, we get to design a game that could possibly be used by first in the future and that we could play in the future. So I think that's gonna be a really cool opportunity for strategic management. So that's all I have for now. Um, if you wanna ask any questions, we'll have a Q and A session later in another Zoom. So looking forward to that. And next, I think we'll have strategic software. Hey, hi, I'm Arvan Amleshi, and I'm the current lead of strategic software. Strategic software is another sub-team branch of the strategy team where we are involved in the technical aspects of coding. The purpose of strategic software is to build apps to collect and analyze strategic data in a process called scouting. The data that we specifically collect are the actions and features of robots. This process is extremely cru crucial in competition as it gives us useful information for strategy against other robots and helps us understand not only the game more, but can also help us to do specific tasks like determining how a match will look like ahead of time and what actions a certain team will take against us. Simply put, scouting helps us with judging our opponent's strengths and weaknesses and helps us generate match strategy. During each season, we specifically make three apps for this process of scouting. The first app that we build in a season is the main scouting app. Members of strategic software design the app with the purpose of collecting data that robots do during actual match games. The app is used by assigned groups of six people during a specific match where each person scouts a unique robot, thus recording their actions. The absolute goal of coding the main app is to make a very user-friendly way of collecting important match data analysis and generating match strategy. The second app that we code in a season is called the Pit Scouting app, which Sean mentioned, which is designed for individuals that fill out an information form with various information in the form of parameters, such as motor types. Uh, this information is gathered from representatives of other teams who are located in a competition area called the Pit. Once the forms are submitted, each team can be viewed and edited later. The third and final app that we build in a season is the analysis app, which is by far where the most technical work and thinking goes towards. The analysis app is where all the information from the other two scouting apps is analyzed. Before designing the app, we meet with members of both the drive team and the strategic management sub team to discuss what type of information is worth analyzing. And once we decide on the important things that are worth to analyze, we code certain functionality to uh, suit this in our app and to accomplish each goal. An example of this, of what we did last season, was an algorithm that can analyze which teams are the best at shooting a certain type of shot and then ranking them visually. A typical member of strategic software is expected to deal with the coding languages of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, regardless of beginning skill level. All members synchronously code together using Replit as an online IDE and GitHub for services in hosting and uh, version control. Traditionally, each year, members have to make three brand new versions of each app since each season there's a new game that requires different information to be scouted and analyzed. So we can't just repeat the same apps. A typical season for us can be compared to a typical software development cycle. So at first we have the continuous cycle of planning, which for us is the time where members determine the vision of the apps. Then we transition to analysis phase, a design phase where members construct features, implementation, which is by far the, probably the difficult, the most difficult stage, which is the actual coding. 
And then testing integration, uh, doing all the coding in a real environment, such as competition or testing for it, and maintenance, which is perfecting the apps. The cycle continuously loops throughout the entire season and only seizes once there's no more work, which is basically never. As far as the topic of COVID is concerned, the potential strategic software is minimally, minimally affected by the pandemic because nothing we are required to do is greatly prohibited by the new regulation or any physical limits on, in that sense. All in all, this subteam requires a lot of work, but I can personally promise it all feels rewarding, both on an individual level due to technical experience and knowledge gained from coding, and on a team level due to contributing to the success of not only our subteam's performance, but our whole robot's performance. And with that, I think uh, we transition to mechanical. Hello, everybody. My name is Robert. I am the mechanical lead for this year, and I'll be talking about the mechanical subteam. So the mechanical subteam is in charge of designing all of the subsystems on a robot. Subsystems can include the drivetrain, collector mechanisms, shooter mechanisms, climbers, or any other device for game object manipulation. In terms of collaboration with other subteams, we coordinate the most with strategy, electrical, and assembly. So this is an example of a subsystem we designed, which is our West Coast drivetrain from last year. And for our subteam, the drivetrain is the most important subsystem, and we design it before any other subsystem since we need it as a base to design all of our other uh, subsystems off of. In a typical build season, we first start off with prototyping. Using basic materials such as wood and other scrap materials lying around, we create prototype designs as a way to test design requirements, feasibility, and proof of concepts for any subsystems we intend on designing. After we have a solid basis, after we have a solid basis from prototyping, we, be we begin CADing. CAD is an acronym for computer aided design. We use CAD to virtually model all of our parts so we can easily make changes to the design of our robot and to make sure we have all the correct ge geometries before we fabricate the parts for our robot. And these are just some examples of CAD models we've created past seasons. So step three is our design review process. After we make all our CAD models for subsystems, we go through an iterative design review process with our coaches and mentors. During the design review, review phase, we make sure to, to verify our CAD models with our coaches and mentors, taking notes on any areas for improvement and modifying our CAD models as necessary. And we make sure to repeat this step as many times as we, as we need to, to make sure we have, the, we have correct designs. So once we are done finalizing our CAD models, we begin to create drawings. We use our CAD software, Autodesk Inventor, to help create these drawings really easily by adding necessary dimensions and notes to make sure the fabrication subteams can easily manufacture all our parts. The last step is assembly, and we help the assembly team with constructing the robot once we're uh, in our final stages of CADing. We make sure to make changes to all our CAD models as well as create new CAD models if any issues arise, such as needing to add or redesign any new parts. Lastly, during regional competitions, we do really awesome stuff such as helping, or helping assist your team in making repairs on a robot, cheering on our fellow Huskies, and of course, having fun. I really hope you guys consider joining your sub team because you will learn so much about how to design robots as well as the engineering process. Thank you. All right, hi, um, I'm Sarah and I am the assembly sub team lead. Uh, so what is assembly? Uh, the art of constructing functional mechanisms using tools and parts. And um, put simply, we take the designs from mechanical and the parts from fabrication and we put the whole robot together. So in a typical season, our assembly process, uh, we would start in the preseason. We would do some activities constructing prototypes based on um, previous games to get some practice with that. And 
um, everybody, new and returning members, gets to contribute ideas and um, develop skills that will be useful for the build season. And then in the build season, we would um, continue that prototyping process. Um, as we get the game, we would work with Mechanical to design prototypes. Um, we work very closely with Mechanical and Fabrication throughout the entire season, uh, Mechanical, because they give us the design that we have to create. Um, it works like a map to um, you know, tell us how things need to look when we're finished and fabrication will give us all of our uh, customized parts for the robot. And what we do is we take both of those pieces um, and we construct all of the mechanisms that go on the robot. So for uh, the time being, that COVID is going to greatly impact what we can do because assembly is a very um, physical sub team and there's not as much that we can do with that. But for now, we're gonna be talking terminology. Uh, we're gonna get familiar with all of our tools and parts. Um, we are gonna talk about assembly procedures as well as Husky Robotics general procedures. We'll talk about the team workflow um, and the way that a season works. And we're going to compile, I'm going to compile some tool training videos so that once we are able to come back in person, uh, you'll all have an idea of how things work already. So you should join assembly uh, if you enjoy being creative. Um, you should join if you want to be a part of the community. We have a lot of you know, everybody in assembly wants to be your friend. And we also have a lot of interaction across uh, sub teams. As I talked about earlier, we collaborate closely with uh, mechanical and fabrication. We also, we interact with strategy, we interact with electrical, um, a lot across the whole team. Uh, there's a lot of hands-on experience associated with assembly. So if you joined robotics to use power tools, assembly is the place for you. Um, and, you know, just in general, it's very satisfying to uh, work on a robot and have go to competition and see on the field something that you built with your own hands. Um, and we also we have lots of fun. So um, I hope to see you guys in the upcoming weeks. And with that, I think we move on to fabrication. Hello, um, so the, I'm Juliet and next we're going to be presenting fabrication and CNC sub team. So what exactly is fabrication in CNC? Well, as Sarah mentioned a, a couple of times previously, we are one of the two fabrication teams that we have on uh, this team. And uh, combined with the two, us two fabrication teams, we make about 80% of the robot. Um, the frame is almost completely 100% uh, fabricated or hand created by our team. And almost everything except for the electronics or air tanks and bumpers and tu uh, tubing, which is almost impossible for us to create is hand created by us. So um, we are the team that physically creates the parts that go on this robot. So um, the difference between our sub team and machining, which you will see after mine, is that we use specifically more computer generated tools. So our main tool that we use is the ShopBot or CNC router, um, but we also often use 3D printing to print out in, uh, custom parts. Um, we occasionally might use lasering for prototyping and maybe powder coating. Um, and these four tools are unique as they are um, programmed through a computer. And that way we can make very precise and almost impossible to, uh, details that would be um, nearly impossible to do without these tools. So the next couple slides, we have a couple examples of things we've done um, in previous years. Um, we don't have to watch the, all the videos because there's two. Um, but here's an example of us cutting out the um, robot cart. And you can see our logo would be almost impossible for us to cut automatically without any, um, without spending a lot of time and making a lot of mistakes. Do you want to go, to, can you go to the next slide, Mr. Schmidt? And then uh, this is also a video, but we can only, we can show just part of it where um, we also cut a lot of metal. Um, this is us designing a Husky plate. And um, this took maybe a total of about 15 minutes to engrave a very specific design on uh, this sheet of aluminum plating. 
And then next page is just pictures of the finished product. So as you can see, these are very specific and very detailed designs that would be nearly impossible to do um, by hand. And it makes it a lot quicker and a lot more precise to do um, on the uh, programs that we use. So um, why specifically us? So um, fabrication is very uh, unique as similar to assembly. It is very hands-on. Um, but our teams are generally a little bit smaller than assembly and the other teams. So every person who is there is extremely vital. And every person who is there will learn to use almost every tool very proficiently to the, um, almost to an industry level. And we have, uh, if and you, if you were to ask anyone else on the, our team last year, that you learn something that maybe you can count on two hands, the, the, maybe you can count on two hands the number of people who can use the same robots that we do. Um, to use the same machines that we do. So we are a sm uh, small, but strong and very connected team. Um, and also if you like to see like physical things, what you do get physically put on top of the robot, you get to cut metal, you get to print plastic and you get to make the physical robot. So what if you don't know anything at all? Well, that's fine because neither did we. This is such a unique skill that um, very few people actually very few people actually know how to do this. So we have a we we usually have a very intensive um, training period where uh, you get a um, training period over the preseason where you get to learn something completely new. Um, but you get a lot of hands-on opportunities and um, to learn something new every day if you give yourself the chance. So this year's plan, uh, obviously, because this is a very physical team, it uh, it is going to be slightly different. Um, we're going to try and keep it as similar as last year because uh, we only have so many machines that we can use at once. Um, but uh, what probably what we're going to try and do is to have everyone try and learn the software first before we can make the physical products. So if you have your own computer, it might, uh, it might be easier to train on your own. But if not, I have some uh, training videos and some links to the um, programs training videos themselves that you can use to learn how to use the programs that we'll be using this year. And next we have the second fabrication team, machining. Hello everybody, my name is Aditya Asher. I'm the machining sub team lead. And we'll talk about machining is like the second part of fabrication. So what do we, what do we actually do? So as Julian mentioned, we physically build the robot. So a Juliet, uh, like, the, like the machining or CNC sub team makes more finer cuts while we make the frame, like the drivetrain that Robert mentioned. So we make the frame, the arm, or any other physical features of the robot. So as you can see at the bottom left, there's like a stock, there's like a two by one aluminum stock. And we use the, the machine bottom right. And then we carve holes into the stock, to make an IUW, which we receive from mechanical. So some machines that we mainly use is the mill. Mill is the most important machine in uh, machining team because mill is kind of like a really big drill press where we, we can carve uh, two by one aluminum or we can make like holes in it. We can basically design our own aluminum. And then we use lathe, which is more for like circular objects. So we can like uh, turn somebody's diameter down or a radius of like a circle. Then there's the drill press, which is basically used for holes that we, uh, we can use like a hand, uh, hand drill press. And then we use many smaller tools like a deburr, screwdriver, uh, hammer, something like that, because it's like very hands-on uh, activity machining. So some takeaways you can get from machining or uh, stuff like critical thinkings you can learn is you can be a critical thinker, you can be a problem solver, you get an open mindset and you have a lot of communication. This is because while you're in machining, you make a lot of mistakes, you mess up a lot of parts, but that's okay, we all do that. And you also have like very intensive communication with all the sub teams because you have to receive parts from mechanical and then you have to give parts to assembly. And when you mess up, they're gonna come back and complain, but that's okay, we can learn. And here to the next one. And then why would you join us? Because this this sub team physically will contribute to the robot. We have an awesome community with great members on it. And as Juliet mentioned, each person has a role because of how small the sub team is. And it is so satisfying to build parts. When you make your first part, you'll know what I mean. 
and you will have a lot of coordination and collaboration with all teams. Let me go to the next one. So this year's plan is very different because our sub team is very hands-on. So we're probably gonna be doing a lot of online video things, but when we actually get into the room, we will try to keep building our awesome parts, make weird funky parts, that'll be fun. We will keep building on our friendly environment and keep experimenting using new different tools that we use. Thank you. I think we'll go on to electrical next. Hi, my name is Nikhil Safianathan, and I'm the electrical lead for the 2020-21 um, robotics season. So just generally, what is electrical? So electrical essentially is focused on wiring the robot for competition. Um, some of the things that we do um, with that is that we work with mechanical and assembly over the electrical board, which is where all the components go and its location and its arrangement on the robot, which definitely does impact um, how the robot is designed because you always need space for the electrical board. Um, besides that, we manage and calibrate the pneumatic systems, which we use pneumatics um, potentially every year. Um, and then we're also very important for troubleshooting at competition because a lot of the electrical connections are fairly fragile. So if a robot climbs on top of us, you never know a, a motor could stop, a, um, um, the pneumatics could stop. So it's always important to have electrical members on deck ready to solve any problems. So that troubleshooting is probably the most important thing that comes with electrical. So some of the skills that you will learn um, in electrical is, it's okay if you don't know all these terms, but soldering, crimping, um, wiring, and working, understanding circuitry, um, and then as well as air pressure, um, and then problem solving, troubleshooting is what I said is the, the, probably the most important thing, because once you learn all the, the, the beginning uh, skills, um, the real application comes, um, although in build season, also comes in competition and the ability to work on your feet and work with limited time, um, that's where electrical is really put to the test. So going over what um, I have planned for kind of electrical training, obviously can't be 100% um, because we're not in school, we won't have the opportunity to, to hands-on learn everything, but uh, I'm gonna try to make the process as smooth as possible, as relatable as possible, and as engaging as possible. I think um, what I want uh, electrical members to get out of this is obviously you won't get the full training that you would get in school, but you, you come out with an idea of what the electrical um, sub team is and the things that we do to a more a greater detail. And you're able to apply that um, fairly quickly in the season and, and understand how it works hands on. So I'm just thinking of different things that we could do in terms of um, learning. So we created training videos this summer, um, which I would share um, just games off the top of my head, like troubleshoot and score, which is something I'm coming up with um, just a way to, to learn how to troubleshoot uh, the electrical board and Jeopardy. And just the ability to find hands-on opportunities um, if they're if are allowed or available. So that that's coming up. But just generally, why you should join electrical. Just the next slide. Yep. So just generally, why you should join electrical is um, much like the other sub teams. Little to no prior experience required. Um, emphasis on none because um, I had none. Um, I have a little bit more now. Um, and it's very easy to pick up a lot of the, um, the skills that we do aren't very difficult um, and just take practice. Um, Hands-on experience, much like the other sub teams, you know, you're getting to physically contribute something to the robot. And hopefully this will happen soon with the COVID-19. Um, and there's a lot of new skills to master, obviously with, with no prior experience. Um, you get to learn a lot of new uh, cool things about electrical and electrical engineering and um, just how the electrical team can progress. And you meet a lot, a lot of great people. Um, the electrical team likes to consider themselves a family um, more than just a sub team, which is a title that not other sub teams usually uh, really have. And then just the final thing you get to learn, if you're interested in the electrical engineering path as a career, this is a great way to kind of jumpstart and, and contribute on a, a more direct level. Yeah. So I think next we have software. Hello everyone, I'm Wyatt and I am the software lead this year. So what does it take to move the robot? Of course, we have all of those other sub teams that we talked, earlier, uh, talked about earlier, like the mechanical team that designs the robot, the assembly team that puts all the parts together and the electrical team to wire it all up. But up until this point, you pretty much just have a very advanced pile of metal and wires. 
That's where the software team comes in. The robot doesn't move until we tell it how to. So we do this with code, of course. That's why we're the software team. So we write all of the code for the robot. And so this includes physical tasks that everyone sees when they look at our robot, like driving or shooting the balls and all that kind of stuff. But there's also a lot of stuff that you might not see just by looking at the robot, like cameras and that kind of thing that involves the networking and sharing data between the robot and the computer. So to do this, we use Java, which is a very common programming language. It's actually the same language as the AP computer science class. So if you join our software team and then later down the line, you decide to take AP computer science, you'll have a bit of a head start there. And the editor we use is the FRC version of VS Code. So Visual Studio Code is actually a editor that is used very commonly in the professional development world. So it's very cool to be able to get experience with that through our sub team. And so some takeaways from the software sub team, our course problem solving and critical thinking. It, there's a lot of uh, problem solving that you need to do when you come in with a robot who has wheels that don't turn and you need to figure out how you can steer that robot. There's a lot of math and thinking that goes behind that. So it's very cool. And there's also a ton of communication. I know a lot of you guys might think programming, you might think sitting in a dark room by yourself, just typing away at a computer. But since we're, we're all working on the same robot code, it's all got to work together. And there's a ton of communication that's got to happen in order to make things work. So what will we do this year? We'll mainly be focused on adapting and updating last year's code as needed, since some of the other sub teams are looking to improve upon last year's robot design. And one of the great things about software is that since a lot of what we do is through code, we can actually install this uh, VS Code Live Share extension, and we can continue to work on code together, just like we would in person. So it's a very, very cool experience. I really hope y'all are interested in software and I look forward to seeing you after the meeting in the software sub team meeting. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Jasmine, the business captain and I'm so excited to tell you guys all about the business branch. Business is a super important part of Husky Robotics as our team is more than just robots. The ultimate goal of our team is to encourage as many people to become the next science and technology leaders, as well as transform our culture in ways that will inspire greater respect for science and technology. To give a quick overview, the business branch is divided into three different sub teams, which are media, outreach, and awards. I will let the leads take over to give you guys a, more details about the respective sub teams. Uh, hey everyone, I'm Omid and I'm the media lead. And uh, media is kind of considered the face of the team. Uh, we make different videos and flyers to promote our team and events that uh, go on social media, take photos throughout the season, and overall we make uh, designs to fit the different needs of the team. Uh, so like I said, we make a lot of videos and compilations for outreach oh. um, and to promote the team. We usually use Wii Video for these projects, uh, but recently I've been playing around with DaVinci Resolve, which uh, Aditya Tolia recommended to me. And speaking of Aditya, I'm sure a lot of new members have seen the video that he made for the online freshman jamboree, but here's another example of a video we made, which was for the first Illinois Summer Media Contest, where we had to make a 30 second submission that shows how we use uh, first core values to make a positive impact on our community.
Um, so here are some of the designs we've made using Photoshop and Canva. Uh, on the left, you can see a cool flyer template. Uh, the rocket in the middle is a design that we put on all of the members' lockers um, that we put two seasons ago that goes along with the deep space theme from that year. Um, right under it is our team button. A lot of teams like to put things out um, in their pit during competitions like buttons. So uh, members from other teams can take them home as like souvenirs. Uh, we also make buttons for each team member that has a design based on their sub team. On the right is Finn, uh, our team's avatar. He's got a uh, pixelated design because of the video game theme from the power up season, which was three years ago. Uh, but we actually really liked the design. So we decided to keep it as our avatar since then. So uh, here are some more designs we've made. Uh, on the left is a flyer we made for our robotics showcase at North that also goes along with the Deep Space theme. Uh, in the middle, we have another locker design and on the bottom is a version of Finn and the spacesuit uh, for that same theme. Um, on the right, you can see a sticker we made that has all of our sponsors on it that goes on the robots uh, shields. And uh, thankfully COVID doesn't have a huge impact on the typical projects we take part in. Uh, every like project we do, like even if you don't have Photoshop, for example, on your computer, there are a lot of places where you can still make designs online like Pixel R in Canva. And uh, overall, whether or not you think you're a creative person or have experience with graphic design, photography, or video editing, you should join if you're interested. And with that, I think social media is next. Okay. Hi, my name is Raj Dadani, and I'm a member of the software team, as well as a co-lead of the social media part of the business sub team, along with Vani. So we have four core social media platforms that we are active on and interact with other teams and people on. These four are Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So I'll be talking about Instagram and YouTube first. So Instagram is the platform where we reach the most people. Usually it's people like on our team, people looking to join our team, people in FLL, et cetera. Um, and some adults are on Instagram occasionally. And we are also connected with many other FRC and FTC teams. So our posts typically include things like pictures of our team in action, updates, like weekly updates during build season and the preseason and some others, but we usually try to post on Instagram about like two to three times a week. Um, so next is YouTube. YouTube is a platform where we typically post video recaps of events that have just happened. Like for example, a completion of some of an event. Um, and recently we posted a bunch of training videos for our various sub teams. So um, we, we usually try to maintain professionalism on our social medias by having engaging and exciting captions, but still being professional as well as being sure to minimize errors in our posts and making our flyers look professional as well. Um, we also interact with other teams occasionally through DMs or messages just to check in with them or if we have any events coming up or they have events. So for example, um, our coaches clinic that passed a few weeks ago, um, before it happened, we DM many FRC teams and asked them to share it with any FOL teams they knew to help them. And occasionally teams do the same thing by asking us. Yeah, um, hello guys, my name is Bonnie and uh, two of the medias that we also use are Facebook and Twitter. And so for Twitter, we cater mostly to adults and the rest of the community. And for tweets, we often reformat other posts to tweets. But then when things ramp up during the build season, we can tweet up to about three to four times a week. And for Twitter, it's more informal, but we always want to make sure that we're maintaining professionalism, and we try to reach out to other teams and engage with first. And then for Facebook, our audience is often parents and the general community, and we try to gear our posts to that, and we create events that people can RSVP to, and we post about one to two times a week. And out of the medias, it's often the most professional. And one thing that we like about Facebook is the fact that we can actually post full albums of photos from events on there. And then on the platforms, we all work to promote STEM with different events that we hold and information we post. And while we know that there are going to be some changes to the content we're going to be paste, uh, posting with social distancing guidelines, we will be working to continue as usual and post content that represents our team. Um, now it should probably be on to outreach. 
I'm just going to put a shameless plug here. Please follow us on all of our social media platforms. I believe the handle is at team 3061. All right, so my name is Alex, and I, along with Anaya, am the outreach lead this year. And the whole point of outreach is to reach out to our community and share what we've done and hopefully inspire younger kids to get interested in STEM. Hi, like Alex said, my name is Anaya and I'm an outreach lead this year along with Alex. And while outreach events may seem like a small part of the Husky Robotics team and season, they're actually really, really important because they give us an opportunity to spread our values, STEM, and display our team to the community. One of the primary reasons why outreach events are beneficial is because it betters one's interpersonal skills. As you engage in various outreach events, you're gonna eventually gain confidence speaking to a large range of people and be able to relay a wide range of important information to audiences in an understandable manner. This is also helpful for competition because a huge part of competition is meeting and talking to other teams and judges. Outreach events also allow the promotion of STEM to happen in the community. While many of the students and coaches at this meeting right now know what STEM is, many community members have never even heard of the acronym STEM before. And these events are opportunities for them to learn what it is. Outreach also encourages students to consider pursuing STEM related careers and academic interests. These events are moments that most individuals do not get often. And it's a place where students can ask unlimited questions to other experienced students to gain insight on how to pursue their interests. Students, parents, or companies that attend these events may also be interested in joining our team, which is awesome. And lastly, outreach events are a vital part of FIRST and its mission, which is the promotion of STEM in the community. Outreach protocol. While these may seem obvious, they are extremely important. Obviously, you have to be very kind and respectful at all times. You don't want to put a bad impression on our team and yourself. And the thing the biggest part is, is students do the outreach. So while Anaya and I this year will go out and find places where we can do events, you guys, the students, are the ones who actually run the events and you guys get leadership and volunteer hours for this. When you do outreach, you wanna make sure you understand all levels of FIRST programs. This is because you might have parents come up to you and ask you questions about how to get their kid involved in STEM. Another big important part is to be informed about the event at which you're exhibiting. This might seem really obvious, but you'd be surprised that there's sometimes kids that show up and have no idea what they're doing there. They were just told to come that day. And the most important thing is to have fun because this is about Husky Robotics and being a team and having fun while learning. So like Alex said, you students are the ones who are organizing the outreach events that we do during this fall. So Alex and I have put together a, and we found a lot of opportunities for you guys. And if you guys are interested in organizing one of the following events, please visit bit.ly slash Husky Outreach to fill out an application and we'll contact you as soon as we can. And we also, if you want to find more information, Alex has also sent an announcement in the whole team chat. Hey guys, it's Vani and I'm the awards lead and we're going to lightly touch on some of the awards we apply for and some within the team. So Chairman's is the most prestigious award at first, and it's given to the team who embodies the model for other teams to emulate. Um, and for that, there is the presentation at competition, a video submission, and executive summaries. And the reason why we always put an emphasis on Chairman's is because it's vital as we can get into worlds if we win it. So other awards that we apply for are the Engineering Inspiration Award, which celebrates success and appreciation for engineering in the school and community, and the Woody Flowers Finalist Award, which recognizes mentors who lead and inspire the Gracious Professionals Award and Dean's List. And then also in the team, we have awards as well, including Rookie All-Star, Business Strategy and Robot MVPs, an engineering inspiration award of our own, team spirit, legacy, gracious professionalism, and senior gifts. 
And through awards, it's a great way to be informed about our community and especially the other sub teams as through awards, we keep track of like the events we host and a lot of the events we do in the team and otherwise. Um, during this time, we will continue remotely and we know that the awards will be judged remotely. Just to reiterate, business will pretty much go on as usual this year. We will still need media members to create different videos and graphics. And as again, we will be conducting outreach virtual events. And this is a really important detail is that we require all team members to put in eight hours of outreach. So please sign up for these outreach events and fill out the form. And I think we would like all submissions or the form to be filled out by next Thursday. And again, all awards will be judged remotely this year. And there's a lot of awards that are continuing this year, if not all. I highly encourage all of you guys to join business. And I look forward to seeing more of you in the business Zoom. All right, thank you all the leads for this amazing presentation. I'm sure a lot of you have questions. You may know exactly which sub team you wanna join, but you might wanna join all of them. Uh, and that's totally okay because a lot of people are confused at the beginning. I will post a link uh, in a bit uh, for the Zoom. Oh, Mr. Schmidt posted it, thank you. For the Zoom meetings that are hosted by all of our amazing leads. And we can talk about any questions you have related to the team or the specific sub team. And we would love to see you and talk to you and get that interaction. You can even meet more of our other members who, are, who have been on this team for longer. And you can even hop around as much as you need if you want to explore multiple sub teams. That's totally okay too. If you have any issues with the Zoom, please put a message in the Hangouts chat and I'll see you all soon. Thank you for coming.